I have used every single M-Series MacBook Pro since the chip first showed up in those laptops, and the M4 MacBook Pro is the first and only MacBook Pro I have ever recommended for regular people to use. My name is Drew Koza. I run the tech website geekingout.ca and have a weekly national TV segment where I review technology. I've had a MacBook Pro with an M4 chip for the past week and have been using it in my daily workflow for video editing, gaming, and everyday stuff. When it comes to MacBook Pros, these machines can be powerfully configured. The temptation is always there to upgrade to the better version of the next level of chip and the uh, configuration with more processing cores, double up the memory. But after using what's basically the bare bones version of the MacBook Pro, I think this could be the perfect MacBook configuration for people who want that MacBook Pro experience, but don't necessarily have those Pro workflows. Before I get into the review, two things. This MacBook Pro was provided to me in advance of release from Apple for testing on loan, but they didn't get any editorial input. Second, you probably tune out when people on YouTube say, subscribe to my channel. But now that I've actually been doing YouTube videos for a while, I can see what a huge difference it makes each time I get a batch of new subscribers in terms of YouTube showing my videos to more people. If you are not subscribed to my channel, do that now. It's a little favor to me, because even if you're the one and only new subscriber today, truly, that will add up to a big difference. And now, the review. At first glance, the M4 MacBook Pro might seem like a minor refresh, but trust me, the many little changes really compound to make a big impact. Adding the M4 chip to the MacBook Pro affects everything about this laptop from improved battery life and charging times to higher performance. I went from an M3 powered MacBook Pro to an M4, so it's not life changing, but if you're going from an M1 Mac or an Intel based MacBook, you're gonna notice a huge performance boost for time consuming tasks like video rendering, for example. There's a few places you'll see improvements in everyday use, of course, as well. Battery life, for sure, up to 24 hours, and improved charging up to 50% in 30 minutes, depending on your model and the wattage of the power adapter you're using. For video calls, the neural engine, that's the AI part of the M4 chip, is gonna be able to do nice adjustments for white balance and brightness. It's also gonna be able to do some cool audio isolation improvements so that the background noise in whatever room you're in isn't gonna be overbearing on your calls. It also has the ability to maximize specs beyond what we could have done with an M3 chip. Up to 32 gigabytes of memory on the M4 chip, 48 gigabytes on the M4 Pro, and 128 gigabytes on M4 Max. Plus, now Thunderbolt 5 support exists on the line, depending on which chip you go with. This is gonna bring faster transfer speeds with compatible devices, but you'll need the M4 Pro or the Max chip. One of the most immediate changes I noticed happened when I first turned on the MacBook Pro and got a look at the display. Nano textured finishes have been available on other Apple products before, but I've never had one. The purpose of this is to reduce glare. With the latest MacBook Pro, you have the option of upgrading to a nano texture display, and I love the way it looks. When you look at your desktop wallpaper, it actually feels more like you're looking at a picture in a nature book rather than a laptop screen. Beyond that, there's a higher peak brightness level of up to 1600 nits when you're working with HDR content, which could be helpful if you're outdoors in a really sunny space, maybe. If you're doing late night work, maybe if you're that annoying spouse who brings their laptop to bed and is trying to get some last minute work in while your significant other is trying to fall asleep, you can dial the brightness down all the way to one nit. Behind that display, you'll also find a new camera system, which for me is one of the biggest upgrades to the MacBook lineup. One of the weak spots with the most recent generation of MacBook Pros was the front-facing camera. It was fine, but not great. Enough that for important video calls, I'd always use continuity camera, which lets you use your iPhone camera as a webcam instead. But those days are long gone, thanks to the upgraded 12 megapixel center stage camera on the M4 MacBook Pro. Center stage is the feature that uses the camera's ultra-wide sensor to keep you framed properly while you're on camera. It's also in the new version of the iMac as well. It basically crops in to frame you in the middle of your camera, but if you have to move around a bit when you're on a video call, the camera will follow you by taking advantage of that ultra-wide real estate. 
You can also manually frame your videos, which is nice if you're taking a quick work call and you want to make sure that you crop out any messy things that might be in the background of your frame. Because of the camera upgrade, Desk View is now available on MacBook Pro. This basically lets you demonstrate things on your real-world desktop in one video window while you're also appearing on camera like you would on a typical video call. This is probably not something that everyone is going to use, but if you know that it exists on your MacBook Pro, then you can always test it out and decide if it's useful. The ports on the MacBook Pro won't look different at first glance, but there are some improvements. You still have the MagSafe power cord, which if you accidentally step on the cord while you're walking by, it will just unplug itself instead of pulling your laptop down to the ground. On the same side as the charging port, there are two Thunderbolt ports and a 3.5mm audio jack for your headphones. On the reverse side, you'll find one more Thunderbolt port, an HDMI port, capable of 8K video output, and an SD card reader. The biggest improvement to the port system though is now all three of those USB-C style ports support Thunderbolt 4 with the M4 chip or Thunderbolt 5 with the M4 Pro and Max chips. This gives you more versatility when you're planning a setup that has external monitors or different accessories. There's not a lot of Thunderbolt 5 accessories out right now, but chances are if you're dropping thousands of dollars on a new MacBook Pro, you're going to want to keep this laptop for many, many years. So. That could be one reason why you might want to upgrade from the base M4 chip that I've been testing to the more powerful M4 Pro or Max chips because you get that Thunderbolt 5 connection. So who is the M4 MacBook Pro meant for? In general, when people ask for laptop advice, I almost never tell them to get a MacBook Pro. It's not that they're not good, I just think it's far more than most people need. For regular people, if there is such a thing, the specs just go far beyond what you would encounter in your normal day. So you may be paying more money than you have to to get this MacBook Pro experience when all of the stuff that you're doing would run almost as well or as well on a MacBook Air. And for Pro users, they generally already know that they need a MacBook Pro because they know the specs required for their workflows or that they need a certain amount of performance cores or memory for that specific app that they need to do their job. So in the past, unless someone really needed a MacBook Pro specifically for a certain task, I just wouldn't recommend that laptop. In the case of the M4 MacBook Pro, I'm feeling a little differently. Here's why. I'm in Canada and the price difference between the M3 MacBook Air with a similar CPU, GPU, memory and storage is about $500. That is a lot of money, but the $500 adds many Pro ports, which brings a lot of versatility to your laptop. And a Pro Thunderbolt dock with ports for SD card reader and extra USB-C and Thunderbolt connections is gonna be a few hundred dollars anyway. So if your lifestyle is in that pro-ish category where maybe you are using a bunch of monitors or you're frequently transferring photos and videos from an SD card or you're backing up a lot of data to external storage drives, it could be worthwhile to have a laptop that already has those pro ports built right into it. Again, I think every MacBook Pro that's come out with the M series chip in them have been phenomenal, but overall I think it's more than the average person needs. This is the first time that I've ever actually tried out a base level MacBook Pro and I am so impressed with the performance of the M4. For what I'm doing, I'm editing multiple layers of 4K video, occasionally dipping into After Effects to do some 3D graphic rendering stuff and then doing some video gaming on my MacBook Pro. And I've barely had any instances where I noticed any significant slowdowns in speed. Occasionally on some games I was like, oh this is taking 10 seconds to load instead of 8. But like, I don't think that you would actually notice those differences unless you're doing like one-to-one -one comparisons. So, the MacBook Pro, even though it is a pro computer, this is the first time I feel like this laptop really makes a great case for the average person to buy it. Getting those pro ports is wonderful. This laptop has the most beautiful display that you're gonna be able to get on a Mac laptop. Plus now being able to add that nano textured finish really takes it over the top. Everyone's workflows are different of course, but if you have that extra room in your budget or if you're pricing on a MacBook Air but knowing that you're gonna need to buy an expensive dock anyway, the base model M4 MacBook Pro makes a lot of sense. It gives you maximum versatility, a generous amount of power for things that most regular consumers slash prosumers would encounter in their day to day. Plus with two sizes and two color finishes, you can customize it a little bit for your day to day needs. 
Hopefully you found this review helpful. If you wanna go dig a little bit deeper, check out my website, geekingout.ca, for more content related to the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, and the most recent iMac. You can also follow me on Instagram, at Drew Kozub, or TikTok, at Real Drew Kozub. It's no dances, just tech tips. And again, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to my channel, truly, it would make such a huge difference. Every time someone new clicks the subscribe button, it tells YouTube, hey, maybe I should show this guy's videos to more people. So please, take a moment now to click subscribe. Hopefully you found this video helpful and you'll stick around to check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for tuning in today.